Okay, let's talk really quickly about what we're going to need for this peacock painting. I went ahead and made up a color swatch for you guys just to show you the paint colors that we're going to end up using. Um, and some of, there may be more that you mix inadvertently as we're painting, but I wanted to show you the ones with the words underneath are the ones that you absolutely need to have. Um, now this says sienna brown. You can use any brown. Okay, even if you have a brown like this, that's fine. You can use that. This is one that I mixed um, from this color in black. Uh, so I was just showing you that this is the range. And um, you're going to need dark blue, light blue, a purple or violet color, green, yellow, brown, orange, black, red, and white. Okay, these other things, uh, you know, you can mix a light blue. I used a light blue out of a container because when I took my dark blue and added white to it, it was, it had a little bit of black in it, so it sort of looked like a smoky light blue, and I really wanted a more vibrant one. So rather than mixing my own light blue this time, I actually used a light blue that was pre-mixed out of a tube because I liked the look of it better. Okay, but you can absolutely just take blue and add a little white to it and make a light blue. Okay, but these are the colors that I started with from the tube, the ones with the words underneath. Okay, the rest are mixed as we go. All right, so I just wanted to give you an image of what you're going to need. Now, I am using, I will show you some things with my palette, but I am not very good at keeping my palette clean. I will usually show what I'm doing, but um, I, and sometimes, you know, the problem that I have is that I am using parts of colors that have already been used or things like that. So my palettes aren't always pretty. It might be confusing to some people. Okay. I want to suggest that you also grab a flat brush. It's not required, but I am going to show you one way you can use these flat brushes today to get a kind of skinny line, okay? So we're gonna be using that as well as all of our other round brushes, our medium, our 10, our eight, um, and our four and two. And I may even use a zero round brush for just the tiny, but you could even use a toothpick. We're gonna do that for the white of the eye and the little um, hole on the beak of the peacock. Okay, so you could use a toothpick or a pen, um, anything small and tiny that you have, a very sharp mechanical pencil would even work. Just something you can tap into the color and just put one little dot with, all right? You need your water and your um, paint rag. And I want to also tell you the way that I work <clears throat> is I keep multiple uh, palettes like this just available so that I can grab them and mix color, okay? Um, they're easy to clean. You could use a paper plate. I would suggest for this painting that you either grab maybe one or two extra paper plates or another thing that I've used is I just go into my Tupperware bin, my, you know, everybody's crazy Tupperware storage area, and I grab like, you know, some old lids from yogurt containers or things like that to keep handy to, to mix little amounts of color as I go. Okay, so those are my tips for um, beginning, um, and I just wanted to give you, because there's so many colors, I actually wanted to give you a visual image of what is needed for this video so that it's not confusing. I'm not very good at auditory um, directions, so I sometimes need a visual with words to show me what I need. So that's why I was trying to provide that for you today. Our first palette, <clears throat> and you know, here's the thing. I don't put all the colors out at the beginning. Um, this is going to be in stages. So I will usually kind of show you or tell you um, when to add certain things. Right now I have a little bit of black 
some of that sienna brown which comes like that but you can use this brown if that's all you've got that's just fine and then I have that light blue that is out of the tube okay and then a big bin of white because for the first step of this painting it's gonna be mostly white um, all over the canvas and then some blue at the top so that's the first palette that you're going to need is this okay so let's remove this and let's do the first step of this painting we are going to take a large brush now you can take a bigger flat brush than I have uh, in the than we usually use anything like this will work okay and you can even go and I probably will for this particular video you can even go this big this is one that I had um, left over from art school it's a pretty big oil brush but I'm gonna use it because it's you know pretty wide or you could use this house brush okay like this these are a little rough and do leave some um, streak sometimes so you got to be careful with those cheap house brushes okay but I'm probably going to use this one right now all right so let's go ahead and let's begin getting this painting started um, I might have to pull back my camera so let me adjust that and then we'll begin So I'm going to take some of my white and I'm just going to start laying on the white. This canvas is a canvas I've reused because I don't like to waste. So you might sometimes see faint pencil marks. We had an interesting year. We had started in Alma Thomas with some of my classes and we were going to do paintings. And um, we didn't get to finish those because we had some other interruptions before spring break and then it's just we just never with programs and stuff that we were doing and we never got to finish it so I had just decided to use these canvases um, you know recycle them I'm a huge fan of recycling things for art okay so we're just laying down white and I know it seems weird but let's just do that first right here we're gonna get good coverage now I know you could you would think well I could save my white paint and not put it on there if it's just gonna be white but we really need to seal the surface of the canvas okay um, it just looks nicer I say this in a lot of my videos it you don't want to leave and of course my cat has decided that right now is the time to play <laughs> with her toy <laughs> of course um, I'll go turn or take that out in a minute Okay, so cover this, seal the canvas. It's a good idea to just cover over it really good. Get your sides. Then we're gonna go, uh, well, let me get the bottom of this really good because sometimes I don't get the, the bottom edges by the palette. Very good. All right, now today seems to be a very noisy day. I thought that if I started this on Sunday that it would be good because it'd be quieter but now my cat is playing with her toy and the neighbor is talking so I can you might hear some things but you know it's real life right all right so I'm just getting a good layer up here back and forth strokes I'm trying not to to make too many swirly painterly marks but you know you can do that if you want um, the reason I'm not is because this has a lot of detail in it and when you go to do details on top of that surface it sometimes can make it a little bit more difficult now I know this is a little weird but go ahead and clean your brush even though we want we don't mind the white being in there the brush is probably pretty full and I'd like the application of the blue at the top to start out at its full capacity okay we don't want it to be too um, watered down yet because when it mixes with that white it's going to be blending into it so I cleaned my brush and I'm going to get into this light blue I'm using up some old palettes that I have that had a little bit of it in there and we're going to put that straight on there at the top 
Okay, so don't put white at the very tippy top. Leave that space for the blue. And we want it to be just how it comes out. Now I do have a little bit, it looks like a little bit of white in my brush still. All right, and then you're gonna just bring it down and you're gonna end up smearing into that white, okay? So what we're gonna do is give it a good mixy mix here. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you to bring it down just a little bit. Okay, and we're just blending. Nice soft strokes. Don't stop on your canvas. Go all the way off and on, just like when you spray with a spray can. Okay, let's come up here. We're going to blend this a little bit. And what I'd like you to do is now clean your brush. Okay, clean it really good. Get it back to clean again. And we're going to start at the top in that blue. And then we're going to blend it down. Okay, so we've got a clean brush and I'm getting the water. We want to get the water out of that brush. Okay, my brush is pretty juicy. I'm going to get the water out and it's going to be a little bit damp. Okay, and then I'm going to start at this blue and I'm going to go down again. Okay, not retracing my steps. And we're just going to get that blue blended in from here. And I'm pushing a little harder this time. And I want to drag that blue down. Okay, just clean your brush on your rag like this. Just get the stuff off the end. You don't have to water it down. And then you're going to get into that blue again and make sure this is all blue. And then blend downward. Okay, and then it's just going to disappear into pale blue at the bottom. I hope you can see that. I have messed up my canvas a little. Okay, so that is our first step. Get that blue background, and then we need to let it dry for just a minute. All right, so um, what I did was I took my heat gun, and I this is the heat gun that I use, and I dry the surface. Uh, I'm a little impatient. You can just wait for it to dry, but sometimes I don't have that kind of time. So I'm going to show you real quick kind of the motion that I use. You don't want to hold it in one spot too long because it will bubble the paint. Just It's not the end of the world, but it does create some extra texture that you may not want. So it's going to be a little loud, but I'll show you sort of the motion that I use, okay? All right, so um, that's what I do. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can use a hair dryer. Um, because I do videos, I actually prefer to use the heat gun because it uh, goes pretty quick, okay? So we wanna have that surface pretty dry, and now we're gonna lay in our lattice work um, on the background. We're gonna use brown. Now yesterday I mixed, I used the straight color, and then I did a little brown on top. So, darker brown. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna use this flat brush. You could use a round brush too, okay? You could use a brush, I would suggest not using a giant one. Both of these would work for that, but um, I feel like this one makes too big of a line when it's pressed down. See, when you press it down, it gets really wide. So for control reasons, if you're using a round brush to do this next part, I would use the medium round brush not the large, okay? You can go back with the large if you want to neaten up your lines, but I find that it's a little bit, a little bit big. So I'm gonna take my palette, my paintbrush is flaking, it's very old. 
<laughs> so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just load up my brush um, both sides and then scrape off the excess okay so my my fan brush has been loaded when I say loaded I mean the bristles are fairly full of paint and then we're going to lay in some lines and I think it's easier to use a fan brush for this I don't know maybe you feel differently than I do but we're, what we're going to do is we're going to come down about a thumb space from the top okay so if you lay your thumb from the top of the painting down and we're going to lay in our top line of our lattice work so we're just going to take the edge of this I got a little wobbly there but you could just say that they're made of branches if you wanted if you if you got a little bit too wiggly okay and I'm just laying that burnt sienna brown in okay that got a little thick on me now we are going to come in about a finger space in you see I got my chubby finger if you want to do a thumb space you can do that okay so about a thumb space it's about an inch about an inch or so we're gonna come in we're keeping it kind of small it'd be nice to come in about two inches but our canvas is not that big so we need to remember that we're working in kind of a small space this is an 11 by 14 and we're just gonna kind of pull that down okay and you can go in there and you can adjust it. We're just laying in a lattice work. I'm not quite straight down here, but you can kind of fix those problems by widening your stick just a little bit. Okay, let's do the other one, about an inch in, a finger space, and come straight down parallel to the side of your canvas. You can come all the way down if you want, or you can stop about right here, okay, because we will end up... Um, covering that with the peacock feathers okay and then originally I did the bottom as well but it ends up being completely covered up so there's no point in doing the bottom lattice work okay you could if you wanted to I did yesterday but you end up not seeing it in the final product anyway so you can stop about right here with that brown line if you want to um, but we can paint over over that pretty easy all right, the next part that I did was I took, I thought it looked cool. You can choose this if you want to. You don't have to, okay? Um, I'm going to kind of fill that in a little bit. We're going to put another color on there. So if you want to go ahead and get a little bit more paint application on some of those wispy points. You can do it. And I did switch to my other brush now that I've got my line laid out. That is not typically how um, fan brushes are used, but I found it to be kind of nice. And we're going to use it again with some darker brown. Okay, so oh, this guy right here. Let's fix him. Just be careful not to get too wide with this line. Okay. All right. Now the next thing that we're going to do is our edges. This may be a little bit tricksy to do, but um, I'm going to kind of hold this up. I like to just take my brush and lay it at the top and let it come over a little bit. I'm adding just a little water to my burnt sienna because it's so thick that I have trouble laying a good line. So just set it on the top of the canvas and pull it across like this. Try to keep it pretty small, okay? And don't put your fingers in your painting. Try to keep your fingers on the back of the canvas at this point. 
what we're doing is just creating like a little lattice work. Same for the sides. You just start on the side. Just let a little of your brush come over, not much. And we're just creating like a little frame. And you could be really a lot neater than I was just then. <laughs> I have a lot of trouble when I work on a easel. I like my gigantic one, but these little ones, I have trouble getting up on my work and I, I don't see well. So this is a little bit uncomfortable for me because I'm not used to working up on an easel for small paintings like this. Okay, so just get a line in there and then one on this side, the same thing to lay in your lattice work. Ooh, I got some white on there, didn't I? It just adds to the beauty. No worries. I'm going to add just a little bit more water and mix it up really good because I really don't want to have to put any more of this on. I'm almost to the end of mine. I saved some of my extra paint from the study to uh, so that I didn't waste it. That's why I'm sort of... You can see the color is a little different because of that white on the side of the canvas, but... And of course we don't need to do the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take some of this paint and put on here because it did get quite a bit lighter. So I'm going to hit a couple of these spots. Actually, I might switch to a, a smaller round brush to do that because this round brush is big. And I'm just going to lay in some of those lighter areas using that color that accidentally mixed up. Okay because of the white on the side of our canvas. And that all of those little subtle changes will give the canvas some character and um, value, which really adds to the emotive and intensity values of the painting, okay? All right, so that is our lattice work. You can be a lot neater than me and take a lot longer if you want, um, but. By the time we put everything else in, those little things don't show up quite as much, okay? All right, now we're going to take that same burnt sienna color that we just put on the canvas for our trellis, and we are going to mix up a little dark brown, okay? So the way that we do that is we take, I'll show you how we mix it. We take the... Uh, it's burnt sienna right here, and we put it in this little well. I'm going to take a little bit of it, okay, because we're going to do some flowers, stems with it too. And we're going to take just a touch of black. You don't want too much black. Black is really powerful. And just a little touch of black really changed the color. Can you all see that? How much color has changed? Okay. So... I'm just going to do a quick check before we move on here. I'm going to check my camera. I have a lot of trouble with my phone just inadvertently shutting off. So I'm going to, before I continue, I'm going to just check. Yep, looks like we're still good. All right. So uh, we are not using this brush right here to do the work with, okay? But you can set it aside or put it in your water. And we are going to get our fan brush out. Or you can use the, the small round brush, whichever one you're using, okay? Something smaller. So my fan brush looks a little funny now because it's wet. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I get all the water out of there. Do a little fan out. And then we're going to tap this dark brown into our fan brush just a little bit, okay? 
and we're going to go in and lay in some darks. And you can just think of it like wood. You're just putting in some darks. And if you just like the dark color and you don't want to do the burnt sienna first, just use straight brown. Totally fine. I just thought I would do this the way that I did it on the study just to show you, but you, you could just totally just do brown. Just straight brown and not do the, the dark brown on top of it. Oh, look what I did up there. That's a hot mess. So we're going to have a thicker one up there, huh? We're just going to pretend that our trellis is made of um, wood instead of like a branch. <laughs> We're just laying some darks on top of it. They can be little tiny ones or kind of thick ones. And we're really just trying to give it more character, okay? And having those color variances will kind of make up for not having a perfectly straight line sometimes. Ooh, did it again. Okay. Now, you are going to need to get your hair dryer or your, ooh, look what I just did. I'll have to put a flower on there. Um, or you, I mean, I guess I could paint over it, but it's going to get a little tricky getting the, the gradients to do the right thing. So if you have little boo-boos like I did just there, you can scrub it out a little and then put a flower or something on top of it when we do our thing. Okay, so I got some water on this brush, and I'm just going to, Lift it out by doing a little scrubbing motion. We don't want any pigment. We just want to clean it up a little bit. Okay, so it will have a little bit of a brownish color there, but and then up here, I don't know if I can get that one cleaned up a little bit. Put a little water on there, just the water, not too much water. You don't want to scrub it too hard you'll pick up your pigment okay but you can get the the basic you know stuff off of there and I'm gonna clean up a little right here too because I kind of got a little bit messy all right and all of that will be less noticeable when we do the other stuff let's make a light a lighter brown shall we we're gonna take our brown um, you can either use your dark brown with white or this color with white. I think I liked using the dark brown with a little bit of white in it. That's what I liked yesterday. You might need a little bit of this, okay? So um, I'm going to go ahead and put a big blob of this because I'm going to need that in a little black. You can use your dark brown or the sienna, and you're going to put some white, just a touch of black, and the burnt sienna to make this leaf color. And what I'm doing right now is just making sure that all of those pigments that I mixed up are really well combined. Okay? This is going to be the color of our branches right here. Okay? So um, get it mixed up really good. And then let's lay in some lining for this now I am going to add a touch of water to my palette my water is a little bit white and the reason I'm doing this I'm trying to teach you guys that you sometimes you paint with paint exactly how it comes out of the tube okay for larger areas and things that you want thick coverage but sometimes when you're doing little tiny scripty lines or twirls you need to water your paint down and the thinner just a couple of drops of water in there 
will make the application so much easier. You can use this brush, but sometimes when you do mixing with the brush, it gets really messy. So I'm gonna clean mine first and get it back to its original state so I can control the application. Okay, so clean it. Get the, and you see how much thinner and um, controllable that tip is now. So now we're gonna lay in our branches, okay? Um, We will have to come back to do this one under the bird. We'll have to kind of see how that goes. We may have to maybe put a point here, a dot there, and a dot over here, okay, to mark where our stick is going to come behind our bird because we didn't do our bird yet. We're going to do our bird body next, okay? So let's go ahead and make some vines some branches. So the first one, I'll go ahead and do this one. I think yesterday I did the bird first and came back to this, but we're gonna kind of put something up to there and then this one's gonna start kind of thick, pushing down. And then we're just kind of rolling our brush in our hand a little bit, okay? This is a little thicker than my other design, but then just the tip of the brush, the little flick at the end Maybe one comes down here like this, okay? Yours can be different than mine. It doesn't have to be exactly, but this is kind of how you build uh, trees and vines up. And I'm gonna come down here and thicken this up a little bit as it goes up. And then this one's gonna come up this way. And what I do is I'm twisting my brush as I go. So fat, I'm pressing hard. Then I'm going to pull up on the pressure a little bit, just to the tip, and then do a little twist. And then twist back the other way to get these sort of uh, curvy, spindly. And this will be different, you know, than the one that I did last time. That's just how it goes. I'm going to do something up here. You want a thin line, you want to pull back on your pressure. If you want a thick line, then you need to press harder. Okay? All right, let's do something coming this way. And then we need a little bit of something here. Okay. I'm going to add just a little water to the end of my paint here and get the rest of this good stuff in there. And then let's finish up this other side, okay? We may even add some more little things in here as we go. Okay, let's go down here and let's kind of come up. We're gonna make our vine look like it is growing around this And I want you to be free to just kind of work with your what you've got here. And you you can make yours different than mine, okay? Don't have to do exactly the same. In fact, sometimes when you go off road by yourself, you can actually learn a lot. And if you mess up, there's ways around it. But I want you to feel... To understand that sometimes the best learning happens when you make a mistake and you have to try to figure out how you can fix it okay so don't begrudge yourself risk because risk is part of reward <laughs> I'm gonna just go to the bottom with this because I'm not sure where our P 
peacock will come out in this particular image. Now this is coming from over here. This is going to have a bird here. So the bird will be perched on this thing here. Okay. Um, and so our bird will stop here and here. So don't be confused about why that's just out in space like that. Okay. Um, and I feel like we might need to put just the smallest little trails of something here. We're going to end up putting a flower there. Oops. All right, so let's look at our picture as a whole. I know that it will have a flower here um, and another one like sort of down here. So I'm just looking for little places where we might need some other oh, maybe I want to put something like this up there. And we can even come back later when we do our little flower areas and uh, add some extra little places. Okay. We're just putting in some little tiny places where there might be some leaves forming. All right, that is where we're going to stop for just right now. Go ahead and use your air, your um, hair dryer or your heat gun to get this nice and dry.